Section 6.1 is similarity of figures, and I'm going to go through part 1 and part 2. The first part is part 1. First thing I want to look at is how to label a triangle. So when labeling the sides of a triangle, you label with a lowercase letter across from the angle. So for instance, up here we have angle A, and right across from that angle A, we have a lowercase a. Right here we have angle B, and then right across from angle B, we have a lowercase b. And similarly for angle C over here, right across from that angle C, we have a lowercase c. So just be aware of how to label your triangles. Next thing I want to do is I want to look at how to calculate the length of w. So here I have two triangles. The first one is uwv, the second one is hkj, and I'm going to look at how to solve for the length of w over here. The way we do this is by using what's called cross multiplication. So first of all, I look at similar sides that I have. I have a 30 here and a 17 here. So that means that 30 is like 17, so I put 30 over 17. And then I say that's equal to w, so I go back to the same triangle that I started with with 30, w. Both those values are on the tops of my equations. So 30 on top and w on top, separated by an equal sign. 17 on the bottom and 20 on the second one. And notice that 20, this side hj, is similar to that side uv. It's got that similar slant and a similar shape. So now that I have my two equations set up, 13 over, or 30 over 17 equals w over 20, then I cross multiply. You might remember this from the fractions worksheet right at the beginning of the year. So I take 17 times w, which is 17w, and that's equal to 30 times 20. And if you're unsure, always just use your calculator. 30 times 20, which is 600. And then notice that I divide by the value that's in front of w. So I divide by the value that's in front of my letter. So I divide by 17, divide by 17. <clears throat> so I get 600 divided by 17, which is equal to 35.3. 35.3. Notice I rounded the 2 to a 3 because the 9 is bigger than 5. So my value for w is 35.3. Check to make sure if it makes sense. It's bigger than 20, which is good, because 30 is bigger than 17. 30, the value in my first triangle, is bigger than the value in my second triangle with the like side. So cross multiply and solve for the value, your letter. And to solve for your letter, you have to divide, usually, by the value that's in front of your letter. Let's look at one more here. So the length of a shadow cast by a tree is 18 meters. Another tree casts a shadow which is 70 meters. How tall is the first tree? So I know over here I can barely see that but you should be able to see it okay. It's 25 meters is that tree. So again I set up my values. Here I have like sides along the bottom and the bottom. So let's take 70. Let's start with the big tree over here. Over 18. Now notice I'm starting with the second object this time. It doesn't matter which one you start with. As long as you keep whatever one you start with on top, whatever one you start with, you put those values on the top of your fraction. So what's going to go in my second fraction? What's going to go on the top? The 25 or the x? The 25, because that's the value in the first diagram that I looked at. So 25 over x. And then to solve this, I cross multiply. Right. So I multiply the 18 by the 25. So again, use your calculator. 18 times 25 is 450, which is equal to 70 times x, which is 70x. Notice I could have started with the 70 times x first. I would have just had these reversed. The 70x would be over here, and the 450 would be over here. What you always want to do, though, is look for the value that has your letter. There it is. Look for the value in front, there it is, and divide by it. So I'm going to divide by 70, divide by 70. Always look for the value that's connected with your letter. So that, actually, those two 70s cancel each other out, and I'm left with just a 1 on that side. And then 450 
whoops, 450 divided by 70 is actually 6.4. So 6.4 is equal to my x. Notice I rounded down to 4 because the 2, which is right beside it, is less than 5. And again, just check to make sure if it makes sense. Does it make sense? That's a big, big key issue in this whole course. So I look at the height of the tree. This is 6.4 meters. Hmm, okay, well the shadow was a lot smaller from 70 meters to 18. That's a lot smaller. So from 25 meters to 6, yeah, that makes sense, right? Because it's a lot smaller than 25. Now let's just go over some different definitions here. Similar figures are objects that have the same shape but are different sizes. So one could be bigger and one could be smaller, but notice that these are both rectangles. The sides of the objects are in the same proportion. The same proportion. So for example, if I look at this side here, which is 8, and I look at the similar side, which is 4, and I say 8 divided by 4 is equal to, right, 2. Now, what are the other two similar sides? Can you see them? Right. There's 5 centimeters here and 2 centimeters there. Let's look at those two sides. Well, if I take 5 divided by 2.5, let's see if they're the same proportion. Let's see if it's going being divided by the same amount. Okay, 5 divided by 2.5, let's see, 5 divided by 2.5 is equal to 2. Now, since these are the same, these two values are the same, therefore we know that these two objects are similar. So the objects have corresponding, which are just means matching angles, that are equal and the corresponding sides are in the same proportion, just like I showed. The proportion is a value of 2, so it's divided by or multiplied by a factor of 2. Let's look at an example of this. The following two trapezoids are similar. So right now I'm telling you that they're similar. Let's look at what the corresponding angles are. Now notice this one's actually been kind of flipped from this one to this one. Notice that my side AB is actually like this side HG up here, which means that my side AD is going to be like what side over here? What happens if I flip this? Completely flip it over. DC becomes EF. AD becomes right, FG. So it's all mirrored. So those corresponding angles, let's see. I have angle A up here, which is going to be like angle G. Right. So those two angles are going to be the same. Angle A is equal to angle G. Let's look at the other one. Let's look at angle B. What's angle B going to be equal to? Right, angle H. So angle B is equal to angle H. You have to be really careful with these because sometimes they do. They flip these objects and you have to be able to flip them in your head. Angle D over here is equal to, right, angle F over here. So angle D is equal to angle F. And finally, angle C, the last one, is equal to angle E up here. So angle C is equal to angle E. So I've stated all the corresponding angles, and notice that they are equal. Now, state the corresponding sides. Now I have to think, okay, well, which ones are the corresponding sides? Oh, right, okay, so that means that AB, that's been flipped, so that's like HG. So AB is going to be similar to H, G. I guess I'll use an equal sign for this one. So AB is equal to H, G. B, C, let's so we'll look at that one and that one. Let's look at B, C. B, C is going to be like which side? Do you remember? Yeah, E, H. Then let's look at the C, D side is going to be the same as the bottom here becomes the top on the other one. And lastly, AD is going to be the same as FG. So I've stated all the corresponding sides and stated all the corresponding angles. Notice again that you sometimes you will have to flip these in your head.
it might have been a good idea to actually redraw this one over on the side. We could have done that really easily and very quickly. I could have said, okay, that one's been flipped. So here I have my AB. Whoops, so that means A is going to be over here. B is going to be over there. That means B goes up to C. And then C goes over to D. And then down back to A. Therefore, I have like a very similar figure and I've rotated it on paper. All right, the symbol for similar is this one here. It looks like a little squiggle. State the trapezoids are similar by naming them in the correct order. So notice the ones above that I had were A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D is similar to G, H, E, F. Now notice how important that is when I flipped it. So A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D corresponds to G, H, E, F. So it might be a good idea to actually flip these if they're not in the same kind of orientation, flip them so that they are in the same orientation. Because you have to label them in that correct order. It's very important that A, B, C, D corresponds to G, H, E, F. All right, last example here. Since similar, si similar objects have sides in proportion, we can create an equation where we cross multiply to find the missing sides. And that's what, we sh that's what I showed you above. So let's do this last example here. So I'm saying these two triangles are similar. Again, you can notice that I have that symbol there, which means that they are, in fact, similar. So it says calculate the missing sides. Okay, well, let's see here. They're in the, and they're in the same orientation, which is nice. I don't have to flip anything. Let's look at the x term here. That's like 20 over here. So what if I said, okay, well, let's see. x over 20, so I'm starting with the little triangle to the big one, is equal to, now I'm not going to use y because I don't know what y is. I'm going to use the 11. And what's it similar to? Does it go on the top or the bottom? The top, right? Over, and what's it similar to? What number? 25 or 15? 15. So that goes on the bottom. Notice that 11 is the up and down, 15 is the up and down. Now do I do what is called? It's called cross multiply. So I, cr I multiply the x times the 15. So I get 15x. And I multiply the 20 by the 11. 20 times 11 is 220. Remember, I separate them always by an equal sign. 220. Now do I do? Do you remember? Well, I know I have to divide by something. But what do I divide by? The 220 or the 15? Right, the 15. How do you know? Because it's connected to the x. So I divide by 15 on both sides. So I have 220 divided by 15 is equal to 14.6. Let's do 14.7. So x, remember those 15s are gone, is equal to 14.7. Now that's the x value. Now let's solve for my y value. So my y value is the same exact method. I have y here is similar to what side over here? The 25. So let's set up my little equation. I have y over 25, which is equal to, and I'm going to use the same proportion 11 over 15, because those two numbers I know. You want to have a value where the top and the bottom are both known. So 11 over 15. And again, I cross multiply. So y times 15 is 15y, which is equal to, and then I have my 25 this time times 11. So 25 times 11 is equal to 275. Now what do I do? Divide by what? The 15. Why do I divide by the 15? Because it's in front of the y. So divide by 15 on both sides. So 275 divided by 15 is equal to 18.3. Notice I round down because the 3 next to it is less than 5. So y is equal to 18.3. So there is how to solve for proportions, how to tell if they're similar or not. Um, we will look at next section.